Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Jacqueline Gomes here joining us today live, not only on the podcast, but the Zoom cast. Excited to have her here from New Jersey as a nutrition consultant. Well, that's the name of our company. Yeah, busywomenweightloss.com. And uh, she's going to talk to us today more about the nutrition counseling, what she does. But let me have her first introduce herself. Go ahead. For sure. Hey, Jill, how's it going? Hi, everybody. I'm registered dietitian Jacqueline Gomes. Uh, You can reach me over on my website at www.busywomanweightloss.com. Beautiful. And uh, the work you do, obviously, you're working with people all over the world with, give me some examples. For sure. So we do private nutrition counseling, both one and one on one. And we do offer group coaching as well. But the majority of our work is with one on one clients. And we guide you through all of life's health and wellness challenges, everything from weight loss to managing chronic conditions like diabetes and heart disease. And uh, we really have a really great uh, personalized approach to wellness. Great. And I know today to start, we're going to talk about, uh, is it six habits? Yes. Uh, In particular, that can really change your life and why these habits are so impactful. Let's start with that. Is that okay? Because you said health habits can change your life. Yes. Go ahead. So, you know, we always think about, you know, what do we need to do to start really changing our life so that it improves from a health perspective, right? And I always say habits are sort of the second step because Mm -hmm. the first step is establishing your goals, of course, right? If you don't know where you're going, it's hard to set up a plan to get there. So your habits are really meant for you to stay consistent towards Mm -hmm. Um, the action steps that you need to take to live that healthier life, that healthier body and that health, healthier mind, because everything's connected. And, you know, well-documented research shows us that obesity and a poor lifestyle um, can really increase our risk for developing those chronic diseases that we hear so much about. Um, So, in addition, it's not only sometimes, you know, people will say, or I sometimes, sometimes I hear, I should say, oh, well, you know, I have these chronic conditions, I'll just take medication. That's fine. But, you know, well-documented research shows us that it decreases our yeah. quality of life. It reduces our life expectancy. And of course, no one wants that. And so and it's um, also just masking the problem and yes. not getting to the root cause of what's really going on. So that could exactly. be a temporary relief maybe, but yes, okay. for sure. So it can be temporary. Um, and, you know, the, the majority of chronic conditions are impacted by lifestyle habits and we can manage those. So why not take steps to improve your the quality of your life and ultimately lengthen your life as well? Yeah, that's what it comes down to, the longevity. Not a bad thing. So yeah. mm-hmm. uh, the first habit someone can do to start towards changing their life, would you say then is the, go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, there's, I wouldn't say there's any particular order to, you know, my, my habits, so to speak, I always try to meet people where they are, but what we're going to talk about today is I want to really just establish a simple approach. And what's, what's amazing about the approach that we're going to talk about today is that it has nothing to do with removing anything from your life, right? We're always, people are always motivated by fear, like, oh, you know, I don't want to do that because I don't want to stop doing X, Y, and Z. But rather, why don't we position it as adding to your life? And so really the first step is, um, from my perspective, is eating more plants. And, you know, a lot of times it's like, well, what does that really mean? And so by plants, I mean more fruits and vegetables, whole grains like quinoa, farro, uh, beans, nuts. So things that come from the earth, right? If it grows, it's considered a plant. So the unfortunate thing is that, and believe, look at, listen to this stat. I think that sometimes people are like, wait, what? Nine out of 10, nine out of 10 Americans don't eat enough fruits and vegetables each day. So many people are just going without altogether. Yes. And so what's interesting is that the, when we ask Americans, so data like Um, you know, feedback that people give, Americans recognize the importance of these foods in their diet. So people are saying, yes, I understand that plant-based foods are healthy for me. So the issue is not a lack of knowledge. It's really a lack of planning and execution. And so, um, you know, we, we may, sometimes I think there might be a disconnect in, you know, why we need to eat these. It's not because, you know, your mom says they're good for you. There's really science to back up eating 
more plants. It can help improve our gut health, for example. And this is a really popular topic now. Um, and so, you know, starting with your gut, um, it can really uh, uh, add benefits such as healthy immune system, overall health, well, and um, overall health, and just a feeling of well-being. Um, also, a higher content of fruits and vegetables, and largely it's due to the fiber, helps to promote a healthy gut microbiome. So this is kind of a you know catchy term that people are hearing in the media now, but it really is a science-based term. You know, our microbiome. We want yes. that to be a healthy place, and it gets confusing because take yes. this probiotic, that probiotic, and yes. it's all these billions of acidophilus things. I don't know what they mean or do, but right. yes. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, it's true. And so basically you can create a healthier microbiome in your own body by having more fruits and vegetables, more plant-based foods in your diet. And by no means do you have to go full on vegetarian or vegan, but a more plant forward way of eating can really improve and add nourishment for the beneficial gut bacteria. And so you really want to create that balance, um, which can contribute to better digestive health, better nutrient absorption and immune function. And so, you know, that's kind of a really good place to start. And then the last thing I'll say about it, if you're not convinced yet, is that science shows us that a diet rich in fruits and vegetables is associated with a reduced risk of those those chronic conditions like heart disease, like stroke, and like certain cancers. So it you know it really just get just get it on the plate. Got it. All right. So and then for those of us, okay, I have young children. They don't well one eats fruits and vegetables, the other does not. What do you say to someone who says they're struggling with the the taste of it or that what what is there any other way to get yeah. those nutrients? Yeah, for sure. So I, I'm in your camp. I have one super healthy veggie fruit and fruit eater. And I have one that's like, mm, maybe I'll have that. Maybe I won't. But really, if you're struggling with the taste of it, um, it is frequency of introducing it into your diet. That's going to ultimately Increase allow your palate, palate to, to it. accept it. Right? it. It's right. It's like anything else. You can really train yourself to start enjoying, you know, certain foods. Vegetables is a little trickier because we're not innately, um, you know, as humans, we like sweet. We're born liking that that's that sweet, uh, yeah. you know, flavor. So since vegetables can be a little bit more bitter, you know, there's nothing wrong with adding seasoning, right? Seasoning is your friend, herbs, spices, you know, embrace that. And also experiment with different ways of cooking them. So um, I just recently did a reel where I, where I taught, and this was over on Instagram, where I talked about grilling your veggies. It's summer. Like utilize your grill. You'll be amazed at how vegetables taste so much more um, flavorful, you know, when you grill them, for example, right? But, you know, the other thing is that we also have to start eating with intention. And so set the intention of including more fruits and vegetables. Um, and, you know, rather than think of it, thinking of it as a goal. So habits are more specific and purposeful, right? And that's today's theme. We want to, you know, how do we get into the habit? And so the goal might, might be, well, I want to eat more, more vegetables. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? How are you going to quantify that? Right. Yeah. And so when you create the habit, you're, what you're really wanting to say is I'm going to start each meal with a fruit or vegetable, or I will include a vegetable at lunch and dinner, or I'm going to add spinach to my eggs in the morning. Right. Those are more purposeful action steps and habits versus this lofty idea of, yeah, I'm going to start eating, you know, more fruits and vegetables, right? What does that really mean? So that is, I think, how you can start implementing it into your life is by really being more intentional with it. All right. What about, uh, do we have another habit? Number two that you think yeah. is important? Get yes. Out. Yeah. So mo let's move into our next habit, which is uh, movement and physical activity. So okay. this is really critical. Um, you know, physical activity is really a paramount for our mental well-being. And, in, in, you know, today's day and age, this is a topic that's really critical, um, especially after what we've all been through uh, with the pandemic. But, you know, obviously we know that um, physical activity helps to promote physical wellness, but working out also helps to pump up our creativity and enhances our cognitive skills. Um, and it's also a really effective way to get energized. So sometimes I hear, oh, I just don't have any energy. I'm so tired. And I'm like, well, start moving your body more. And it seems counterintuitive, but it really does help. You know, exercising elevates our mood by boosting 
those feel good hormones, right? The production of endorphins and a lot, those hormones really act as a natural antidepressant. So it's critical for our mental well being, but it's also critical for the wellness of our body. I've never, ever, ever encountered someone who said, wow, I really regret, you know, going on that walk or doing that workout or moving my body more with my children. Nobody says that. You know why? Because you feel amazing after you do it. So a really simple way to start is if you're not moving at all, get up from your, maybe you're a work mm -hmm. home person, get up from your desk once an hour. Maybe set the intention of uh, walking 15 minutes at lunchtime and 15 minutes after dinner, right? So you don't have to like overhaul your whole life, but just find ways to start moving more. Got it. Well, thank you for that. We also have to take a quick commercial break. This yeah. might be the best time. And mm -hmm. we'll, we'll talk more about number two in a sec, but tell us yeah. how we could reach you. Yeah. So if you're interested in reaching out to me, you can email me at Jacqueline Gomes, RD, like dietitian and like nutritionist at gmail.com over at my website, www.busywomanweightloss.com. And on Instagram, follow me at Jacqueline Gomes nutrition. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right, everyone stay tuned. We'll be right back with a super, 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 super quick break. <laughs> Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. Again, Jacqueline Gomes joining us here, and we're talking today, well, about some uh, great steps that we can start introducing in our lives with these new habits that are eating better and for nutritional purposes. So we talked about the first thing uh, was eating more fruits and vegetables. And mm -hmm. number two on the list was movement. Yep. So we have eating more plants, moving our bodies. Uh, and there's probably more to that. Anything yeah. about water intake? Yeah, <laughs> Which makes yeah. me think, I don't, oh, I do have another water. Excuse my reach. I should yeah. have some more of this. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. So um, right now we're headed into the hot summer months, right? So mm -hmm. a lot of times we may naturally feel more thirsty. So it, it kind of serves the purpose of, you know, we just drink more often, which is great. But all year round, water does actually matter. And so, um, you know, I really encourage you, uh, you know, and especially if you're listening out there, do it now, have water by you. I always say, if you don't have a bottle of water within your reach, it's too far. You need to get it in your, in your, you know, in your frame of, of, of vision. Like they could have, I was behind yeah. the computer. I so said, oh, I'm I so glad that you out. have yours. Um, but you know, water, um, it does a couple of things. For one, it supports the functions of our cells and our organs, which is critically important, right? Water helps with healthy skin. Um, it can help us uh, feel more alert and support brain function. It also aids in digestion. So, you know, water is critical and it is considered a nutrient because anything that we need for life is considered a nutrient. So don't, don't think of water as just this thing like, oh, I, I heard I'm supposed to drink more water. You really do need more water. But, you know, what's really important is that by drinking more water, you may be replacing it or reducing your sugar sweetened beverage intake, which is really what I, where I want you to be. And so studies show us that just by the simple act of reducing or eliminating sugar sweetened beverages, it can really have a positive effect on our weight and our general health. So a good place to start if you're someone who's struggling with that is maybe start by cutting it, right? So maybe doing half of your, whatever you're drinking juice or um, you know, whatever energy drink, you know, half of that and half water, and then slowly wean yourself down. Um, so that's a really good place to start. If you're um, also uh, struggling with, you know, not having uh, the water with you is sort of getting into that habit of carrying a refillable water with you everywhere you go, right? I always have my bottle, whether I go driving to the grocery store, I'm at my desk, it's always with me. Um, you could also try flavored waters like seltzers. They're typically like zero calorie options. Um, so those tend to work out well too. Um, and then I like to call water with benefits is adding lemon or lime, oranges, cucumber, ginger to your water to kind of enhance it as well. Um, herbal teas. Uh, do provide hydration, plus you get a little boost of antioxidants. And, you know, also a good habit to get into is just start your day right away with a glass of water. So if you set that habit initially right from the get-go, you're already ahead of the game. I keep water next to my bed. Do you remember this old movie? Maybe it's not that old, 10, 15 years, called Signs. 
like aliens. But in oh, this movie, know. Signs, there was they left water around like the whole house for like the aliens or whatever. So it was kind of, so when I wake up in the morning, it's so funny. Like I have water like everywhere. And then yeah. here on my desk, maybe I have water, empty bottles everywhere. It's like, like it's I'm so calling cool. in like an alien to suck my water. I'm not, but I do. <laughs> I believe in the hydration. If I get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, I drink more too. I don't know if that's exactly. good or bad that I wake up, but um, I, you know, I, I really believe in that factor too. And just by the way, when mm-hmm. you eat a meal, right, we're talking about eating more healthier fruits and vegetables. What is the ratio of what we should be eating and drinking? Because can't some water help fill us faster? Is that better for our digestion? Yeah, that's a great question. So there are some techniques around uh, weight loss where um, sometimes it's recommended to drink water before your meal to kind of fill you up. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, you know, I don't typically give that recommendation to my clients, mainly because um, I try to encourage them to drink water between meals so that they're getting that hydration and they're hungry enough to eat that those nourishing foods at mealtime. Um, but, you know, in yeah. terms of how much water you should be getting, I typically recommend around half your body weight in ounces. So it is going to vary from person to person. And then the other consideration is where that person yeah. is starting. So if I speak to someone that says, well, really, I only drink, you know, maybe 30 ounces of water a day, it might be unrealistic for me to say, oh, we'll bump that up to 64 ounces. That's, yeah, that's a that's huge a jump, lot, yeah. right? So I try to meet people where they are, add on maybe one or two cups each day or every couple of days until they start getting used to it. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for that. We still have five minutes left in the show. Let's continue yeah. through uh, the rest of our notes here. Uh, mm-hmm. Where do we leave off? Because I can't get reception to pull it back up. Tell no, me. That's where. okay. That's okay. Yeah, yes. I'm refreshing. We, we were, yeah. So we were on step three. Um, so it. step four, you know, now that we are eating more plants, we're moving our bodies more, we're drinking more water. Um, we need to get quality sleep. Oh my gosh. This is such a big step in having you feel better, more energetic. I got to tell you another stat, another scary stat for Americans is one in three Americans don't get enough sleep on a regular basis. And this is our like, go, go, go attitude around life, which is great for accomplishing things, but it's not great for managing stress, especially those stress hormones. So our busy, stressful lives really get in the way of a good night's sleep. So practice good sleep hygiene, no electronics, 60 minutes before bed, Mm -hmm. try to limit like negative news. Um, If that affects you, not everyone's affected by that. Um, Maybe uh, stick to a dark, cool, kind of quiet room that tends to work well. Also consistency around bedtime routines. So try to go to bed and get up at about the same time each day to train your body that that's sort of your, your normal. And that will help with falling asleep faster. Limit caffeine, obviously, before bed, um, and then get regular physical activity. So all of those um, little steps can help contribute to a more restful night's sleep if, in fact, you're struggling with that. Perfect. All right, good. Thank you for that. Now, also, combination of all these things. People might say, it's too much at once. Can we start this step slowly and introduce them? Just (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, I like to always advocate for the power of one step at a time, everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's really critical for you to look at where you are in your life and assess where you can make changes that are impactful for you. If you're not struggling with sleep, don't start there. Right. But if you look at your diet and you're like, wow, you know what? I don't remember the last time I had a piece of fruit, or I think I had vegetables sometime last week. Maybe that's an easy place for you to start and start with one meal. Don't, you know, don't try to overhaul your whole diet in one day, but maybe just say, oh, I'm going to start adding veggies at dinner and get consistent with that. All right. Exactly. Well, that's a good idea. And that's a good way to start, especially breaking in with our kids, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, let's uh, also, we want to talk a little bit about a final habit for changing your life. Are we on the floor? Yeah, for sure. And then last, well, yeah, we could squeeze them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really quickly. So number five, and this is critical for mental health and it really ties everything together is practice some form of gratitude, meditation, or journaling. So what I'm looking for here is the process of reducing stress and cortisol levels, which can help improve your sleep, improve your energy, and also also make it more likely that you choose 
healthier habits in your life overall. If we're feeling more positive, we're more likely to choose positive circumstances and positive events, right? And so you could start by maybe just writing down five or six things that you're grateful for each day, right? Maybe you can journal, um, maybe you're having some heavy feelings, dump that onto a journal and that can help reduce stress and, and improve your overall physical health. So really cultivating that, um, you know, feeling of gratitude and just overall well-being can really help set the stage for a healthier day and a healthier future. Got it. My goodness. Thank you so much. Well, this is exciting work that you're doing, working with people um, all over the world. Share how we contact you. And what's the process? Yeah, for sure. So um, reach out to me by email at Jacqueline Gomes, R-D-N at gmail.com. My website, www.busywomanweightloss.com. You can even schedule your appointment right through my site or follow me over on Instagram at Jacqueline Gomes nutrition. Perfect. Thank you so much. Pleasure having you back. And uh, thank you. Staying good and healthy, hydrated. And we have the fourth weekend coming up. So we got to just warn everyone not to overindulge, right? Yes. Right? Stay healthy, stay hydrated, <laughs> for sure. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you again. And uh, pleasure having you back. And we'll Great. talk to you next time. Thanks so much. Thank you. Take All care. Those healthy steps. I'm starting with the hydration. Thank you. Yeah, again. great. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.